Good evening and uh, welcome once again. It has been a long time since uh, we had uh, our, late, our late night uh, presentations. It has been a busy, busy last month doing some uh, medical mission at work training and uh, looking at uh, the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 58 with the uh, medical missionaries to be able to know what uh, the Lord needs us to do at such a time as this in connection with the third angel's message. But uh, I'm glad again that uh, we are back and rolling into our late night uh, presentations. We were continuing with the series or we started a series on uh, a need for Sabbath reform. And uh, this is part three of uh, the presentation in this series. I need uh, for Sabbath uh, uh, reform. And today we are going to look at various things. First of all, in, uh, in the first presentation, we looked at uh, God giving us the Sabbath and uh, what, what it's meant for. And uh, in the second presentation, we looked at um, the role of the church in uh, Sabbath uh, reform, the role of uh, the leaders, and uh, the role of uh, the parents and the children in uh, Sabbath school. And so tonight uh, we want to look at a few things and uh, it will be in uh, our deportment on the Sabbath uh, day. And so I'd like to welcome you into the presentation and uh, allow me to offer a word of prayer before we go deep into this. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for giving us uh, another chance to be able to learn as your children. And uh, I pray that uh, we may be convicted of the truth. We may be converted by it. And Lord, this truth may shine forth in our lives that uh, many may see the light emanating from Jesus Christ through us. And they may give you glory as uh, the book of Matthew chapter 5 says. And so give us a uh, good network coverage. Give us a uh, good listening ear and speak to me and through me for the glory and honor of your name. In Christ Jesus' name, we beseech thee these things. Amen. And so um, I'd like to start uh, with something that uh, I found out this Sabbath that was interesting. It's a quote that uh, we know of, but uh, I'd like just to remind us of it. That is uh, Testimonies to the Church, Volume 6, page uh, 356, paragraph 4. It means eternal salvation to keep the Sabbath holy unto the Lord. God says that them that honor me, I'll, me I will honor. And so the, the Lord speaking to us that uh, it really means eternal salvation to keep the Sabbath holy. And why is that so? Because this is a day when we are told that we should bring all our burden to him and he'll give us rest. And that is in the book of Matthew uh, chapter 10. Uh, I'll go to my Bible and uh, just pull something in it. In the book of uh, Matthew, we are told, come unto me. That is book of Matthew chapter 11. Um, I'll start from verses 27. So let us, let us read this. Why does it mean eternal salvation to keep the Sabbath holy? We are told in verse 27, all things are delivered unto me of my father and no man knoweth the son but the, the father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Uh, I'll shabbat you. I'll give you rest. And uh, we understand that um, this rest is uh, both physical and mental. Um, uh, both are physical and mental and spiritual. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When uh, God had uh, completed creating everything, and uh, I like to look something in my Bible, just uh, 
for that uh, sake. When uh, God had uh, accomplished the creation, he pronounced everything perfect. And uh, he wants us to enter into rest as he entered into it. Not that the Lord was sick, not that the Lord was tired, but um, he wants us to have the refreshment that he has, seeing that everything is perfect. So Sabbath also reminds us always of uh, the perfection that is in Jesus Christ. And uh, I, I like to read Cancels to the Churches, page um, 217, paragraph 1. Cancel to the Churches, what this rest is all about. CCH 217, paragraph 1. And um, quoting Matthew 11, 28, this is uh, what um, we are told on this rest. Our Savior's words come unto me, and I'll give you rest. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28, a prescription for the healing of physical, mental, and spiritual ills. Though men have brought suffering upon themselves by their own wrongdoing, he regards them with pity. In him they may find help. He'll do good things for those who trust in him. And also, image 247.1, just um, as we go through this presentation, we are told that abiding peace, the true rest of the spirit, because what we need is rest. And uh, how do we carry ourselves during the Sabbath? It is just coming at the feet of Jesus Christ and being able to be refreshed in his presence. And he says, come unto me who are heavy laden, and then I'll give you rest. And we have seen that that rest is physical, that rest is mental, that rest is spiritual. And then... Uh, uh, this rest of the spirit, we are told that the abiding peace, true rest of spirit, has but one source. It was of this that Christ spoke when he said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Matthew 11 28. And he connects, she connects this with uh, Matthew, uh, John chapter 14, verse 27. Peace I live with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. John 14, 27, this peace is not something that he gives apart from himself. It is in Christ, and we can receive it only by receiving him. Now, that is why uh, when I was reading uh, Matthew chapter 11, I started as early as 27, all things are delivered unto me by the, my, of my father, and no man knoweth the son but the father, neither knoweth any man the father save the son, and he to whomsoever the son will reveal unto him. So, the, the reception of the son actually comes with the true rest of the spirit. And we cannot have the true rest of the spirit if we are not having the son. And so whoever has the son has that uh, rest. And so the, the Lord is inviting us into his Sabbath. It is not our day. It is his Sabbath. But he gave it to man so that uh, man may also be reconciled to him even after sin, that he may know that uh, the God of creation is the God of recreation and restoration. And so it, it means eternal uh, salvation to keep uh, the Sabbath uh, holy. Now, when we come into the presence of the Lord, what is exactly expected of us? And uh, I'll try to share some few things with us. And uh, I know that uh, the Lord will um, bless us. Now, uh, I'll just like to put some few things as we go through this. Every teacher in the Sabbath school should be a follower of Christ. And those who have not identified themselves as the disciples of Christ, showing by a consistent life that they are Christian, should not be invited to become teachers in Sabbath school. Because we are talking about bringing the rest of Jesus Christ in our midst, recreation, restoration, and uh, total abiding in peace, the peace that can only be given unto us if we have the true rest of the spirit and if we have the son in our heart, if we have received the Holy Spirit in our heart. But then if uh, the teachers of the Sabbath school are not living consistently to this rest and to this true rest of the spirit, then we understand there is nothing they can impart on the congregation who comes to find the true rest in Jesus Christ. And so every teacher should not be, everyone, 
uh, we are told that um, that every teacher in the Sabbath school should be a follower of Christ. If they are not, they should not be invited to become teachers in the Sabbath school, for they have need that some one teach them the foundation principles of the love and fear of God. Without me, Christ says you can do nothing. Then of what value will be the teaching of one who knew nothing by personal experience of the power of Christ? It should be a great inconsistency to urge such a one to take a class in the Sabbath school, but it is even worse to permit a class to be under the influence of a teacher whose dress and deportment deny the savior whom he professes to serve. And so uh, there's some much that is spoken about when we come to the issue of grace reform. And um, you hear people say that, uh, the, the, we should not judge each other on dress, yes. And uh, dress is an index of the heart. But uh, we have found people who dress so well, but uh, lacking even Jesus Christ in their heart. They have not experienced Jesus Christ in their heart. And so it is not just about dressing well, but actually even your dress um, representing your character. It's not good to dress well and then your character does not befit even the dress that you are wearing. It, it will be just uh, trying to be a wolf in sheep clothing. And uh, that, that is on dress and deportment, and we are looking at uh, a need for Sabbath uh, reform. Also, another thing we have to consider is the Sabbath work. And uh, we are told that physicians need to cultivate a spirit of self-denial and self-sacrifice. It may be necessary to devote even the hours of the Holy Sabbath through the relief of suffering humanity but the fee for such a labor should be put into the treasure of the Lord to be used for the worthy poor who need medical skill but cannot afford to pay for it. And uh, this is uh, um, medical ministry or um, let me see uh, where this is uh, medical ministry uh, page uh, 216 paragraph two, the, the previous quote where actually uh, our dress should be one that shows the fear of the Lord is uh, uh, canceled on Sabbath school work, page 93 paragraph two. Day of days, when uh, we are coming into the Sabbaths, we should know that this is a day of day and hallow my Sabbath and they shall be assigned between me and you that you may know that uh, I am the Lord, your God, Ezekiel chapter 20 verses 20. The Sabbath should be made so interesting to our families that its weekly return will be hailed with joy. It should not be um, a day that uh, people want to forget it so easily. People want to go about their business after it. Uh, it should be a day when it uh, comes, there's a lot of rejoicing because people know that um, they, they are going to meet their Lord. And uh, when it's coming to an end, it should be a day that people uh, would like to extend and guard the edges of it, knowing that uh, it carries with it blessings and uh, special blessings, which uh, cannot be found on another day. And so it should be a day that we should enjoy being in it because it carries some blessing which other days do not carry with it. The Lord sanctified it and uh, hallowed it. And so it's not uh, just uh, a normal day like uh, any other days. If in the minds of the children, the very thought of the Sabbath should be bound up with the beauty of natural things. Happy the father and mother who can teach their children God's written word with illustration from the open pages of the book of nature who can gather under the green trees in the fresh, pure air to study the word and to sing the praise of the Father above faith I live by, uh, page 274, paragraph four. Now, um, many a times we have taken the Sabbath to be a day of spending in church the whole day. And uh, it has become so cumbersome and wearisome that people really, try having the thought of when will the Sabbath end. But if the Sabbath be conducted aright, then uh, we should have sessions where parents can take their own children, go learn about nature. And even though living in a world cast by sin and everything sometimes seems so uh, unpromising, 
the parents can have uh, a time with their children and uh, just walk through nature and be able to educate their children on nature and uh, the healing power of nature, you know, and the lesson book, uh, nature as a lesson book where God reveals his mysteries unto us, uh, mysteries even that um, they have not been able to be unlocked through reading the, the pages of the, the Bible. But uh, when as you walk through nature, God reveals this and this, and the children can be able to know the medicinal uh, power of uh, different plants as uh, they walk around with uh, either medical missionaries or they walk with their parents who have knowledge in this, or they walk with the Sabbath school teacher through that, so that uh, the children should not be spending more than three hours in the desk just listening to somebody talk. That is not how God has um, has um, has made the minds of the young ones. They they have their span of listening to things. They like things which are illustrative in nature things which are pictorial in nature. And so to interact with nature and be able to explain these things and the loving God, how he has been able to sustain nature is part of the Sabbath. And uh, most of the time we spend uh, our time in the Sabbath school arguing about this and uh, in the afternoon arguing about this and that and um, trying to solve controversies or doing our own thing and then uh, we, we miss the blessings of the Sabbaths most of the time because the Sabbath school have not been conducted aright. And so we need a Sabbath reform. Uh, also, we are told, continuing in Faith I Live by page 274, paragraph 5, in pleasant weather, let, uh, uh, let parents walk with their children in the fields and groves amid the beautiful things of nature, tell them the reason for the institution of the Sabbath. Describe to them God's great work of creation. Tell them that when the earth came from his hand, it was holy and beautiful. Every flower, every shrub, every tree answered the purpose of its creator. Show that it was sin which marred God's perfect work, that thorns and thistles, Sorrow and pain and death are all the result of disobedience to God. Bid them see how the earth, through the earth, though mad with the curse of sin, still reveals the goodness, God's goodness. If we can cultivate within us a beauty of soul corresponding to the beauty of nature around us, there will be a blending of the divine and the human agencies. And uh, as the sun goes down, let the voice of prayer and the hymn of praise mark the close of the sacred hours and invite God's presence through the cares of uh, the week of labor. And so Sabbath, uh, as uh, we have conducted, it needs a reformation. And so uh, let us try to cultivate a heart of thanksgiving. Let us instill in our children uh, the heart of reciprocating what God has done for us. And even though, as we have read, there is um, a blight of sin that has come upon us, but still through nature, as we take a walk with the children, we can still see beautiful things that uh, can be able to really show the love of Christ uh, uh, to these children and to know that uh, he is still at the helm. If he were not at the helm, then everything could have been destroyed. And so the parents can make the Sabbath as it should be the most joyful day of the week. They can lead their children to regard it as a day like the days of days, the holy of the Lord and uh, honorable. And um, talking about the experience in uh, child guidance, uh, page 528, paragraph two, uh, two we are told that uh, the, the reason why we miss the blessings of the Sabbath is because we extend the preparations of the Sabbath into Friday late, and then we find ourselves in the Sabbath. Still, our minds are still hinged upon the things of the earth instead of the things uh, of heaven. And so if we can start preparing for the Sabbath on Sunday, by the time we reach on Thursday, everything is in place. Only what is remaining actually is the preparation of the meal, which cannot take the whole day, by the way. And uh, we can be able to prepare our meals and they can be ready in time so that uh, from uh, 
evening, before even the sun sets, we start reflecting upon the goodness of the Lord as we, as we approach the holy hours. And so the hearts who have, which have received sanctification and uh, which have received the grace of God, they will appreciate the early preparation of the Sabbath. They will value uh, uh, coming into the presence of God early and uh, being able to share in the blessing so that uh, they don't find the holy angels seated for the Sabbath, that the angels find them seated for the Sabbath. And so if the preparation are made ready by um, Thursday and only Friday is uh, looking unto what is not in place, what has not been carried on throughout the week, then we shall find that the Friday even will be a delight unto us. The preparation day will be a delight unto us because we shall be only doing uh, final touches. And then uh, when uh, the evening comes, uh, the angels will join with us in uh, hymns of praises as we wait um, uh, the holy hours to come and we shall receive the blessings that we have been missing all through the week. Now, a reformation in preaching. Let, let me touch on this uh, a little bit. A reformation in preaching then on the Sabbath day. This one we find in uh, Testimonies to the Church, uh, volume 6, page uh, 361. Uh, we read on the preaching at our Sabbath meeting should be generally, the preaching at our Sabbath meetings should generally be short. Opportunity should be given for those who love God to express their gratitude and adoration. And uh, you can check out um, the presentations on um, um, social meetings on the Sabbath. That is um, social meetings on the Sabbath, which should occupy a larger time than the sermons. And in this social meeting, I'll not go into it so much, but... Uh, it is people being able to give testimonies of how the Lord have led them throughout the week. What kind of people have they met? And what are the needs of these people? How can the church come in if you are not able to help in that condition, in, in, in the situation I mean? And, um, you know, the reason why we can't have a social meeting on Sabbath, it is because we have stopped being missionaries, each one of us. If all church members were missionaries, then... Um, each day of the week, they will be meeting with some people, sharing their faith, looking for the needy. You know, Christ never waited for the needy to come to him. We should be going to seek for the needy because Christ came for us in the Garden of Eden. He came for Adam and Eve when they were lost. Adam and Eve never went to Christ when they were lost. But Christ took the initiative to come to them. Also, we should work in Christ's method. Christ mingled with the people as if he desired of their uh, 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 to know of their needs then he helped them meet their needs and then bade them follow me that is Christ's method alone will bring true success and so we should be going throughout the week to various people to various homes sharing our faith sharing the love of Jesus Christ and then we shall be able to interact with them as if we needed of their as if we wanted to know of their needs and be able to help them have those needs then when we come to the Sabbath and uh, the sermon is short and every church member is given an opportunity to express the experience they have had during the week, then we shall be able to do a work of Isaiah 58 and then it shall bring in the loud cry. We are told that Isaiah 58 is the third angel's message for Seventh-day Adventist. While we have the third angel's message for the people outside, to avoid receiving the mark of the beast. We have neglected the third angel's message for the church, which is Isaiah chapter 58, the book of Acts chapter 10, verse 38, and the book of Luke chapter 4, verse 18, how Christ went about doing good. That is the third angel's message for the Seventh-day Adventists. But uh, we have become so sluggish. We have entered into a spiritual maze and uh, our eyes are in Laodicean state so that we cannot comprehend spiritual things. It is only if God will open my eyes and open your eyes that we shall see a greater work for us that encompasses the third angel's message, which is the right arm of uh, the gospel, 
that is uh, medical missionary work. And uh, we shall go to homes, uh, visiting people and uh, not entering into this contention of doctrines, but just showing the love of Jesus Christ. I don't believe that um, everyone that Christ met their needs uh, was forced to be a Sabbath keeper or uh, was uh, a convert. No, Christ went out of his ways and ministered to people who are not even Seventh-day Adventists at that time. He ministered to the Samaritan. He ministered to the Gentiles, the Greeks. He ministered to people who had never stepped in church for so long. But um, we always think that um, the Sabbath will be proclaimed more louder when we go outside there and uh, threaten people with the mark of the beasts and the laws and all these things. These things are needful to be talked about, but uh, Christ says that uh, don't forget justice, mercy, and love, which are so much important. While you are doing the other things, we have really to uh, uh, come to the people where they are and be able to share the spirit of Christ with them. And um, I think I'll go on and quote something in uh, uh, COL 415. COL 415, I think it should be paragraph five. I'll start from uh, 415 paragraph uh, five and 416 paragraph one. Uh, I'd like to read with us. We are looking at a need for Sabbath, uh, of Sabbath reform. Those who wait for the bridegroom's coming are to say to the people, behold your God, the last rays of merciful light, the last message of mercy to be given to the world is a revelation of his character of love. I talked in one of the videos about the twofold message of Revelation chapter 18. We have the revelation of the character of God and the proclamation of the message itself. Now, just uh, to talk about this, the revelation has to do with um, the manifestation of the character of Christ. And then we can come to the proclamation, which is come out of her, my people, lest you receive the mark of the beast. But you cannot go proclaiming the message when the revelation has not been there. The revelation is that the message will go as a witness. And uh, how does it go as a witness? When you read uh, Revelation 18, verse 1, it says that, uh, and then I saw another angel coming from heaven and uh, um, with a great glory and the whole earth was covered with the glory of God. And so this glory is the character of God. Once it is manifested, it's revealed in the lives of his children, then it can be proclaimed. But first of all, there must be a revelation, the manifestation of the message itself in the people who want to proclaim the message then the message will go with the power. And what is the catalyst? What is the fulcrum of this? It is the work of Isaiah chapter 58. We are saying that when you do these things, then shall thy light break forth like the morning and it shall go as a rare word or a real word before the, and then uh, uh, we shall turn our feet from the Sabbath and then we shall be the repairers of the bridge. And so while uh, we are so zealous on proclaiming on proclaiming the third angel's message, let us be so zealous in revealing the message first. When we reveal the message, then the proclamation will not be something so hard to do. You know, the world is waiting to see Christians. It is what they are waiting for. They are not waiting for Christ to be proclaimed. No, they are waiting for Christ to be seen. And so I was to read something in 60 about uh, a preaching on the Sabbath, it should be short, and then a time should be given for everyone to express their gratitude and adoration. And so it is because we are waiting for pastors and we are waiting for the elders to go outside and meet the people who don't know the truth. That is why we can't have a social Sabbath and people give gratitude and adoration because they have nothing to tell in those session of testimonies. When the church is without a minister, someone should be appointed as a leader of the meeting but it is not necessary for him to preach a sermon or to occupy a large part of the time of service. A short, interesting Bible reading will often be of greater benefit than a sermon, and this can be followed by a meeting for prayer and testimony. You see, a need for Sabbath reform. We, 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 we have become so mechanical in the way we 
really conduct our Sabbath school and uh, our Sabbath days. We know that uh, go to the church in the morning, read your lesson. After the lesson, we have the announcements. After the announcements, some three songs, and then we are having the, 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 the session where ministers come to the pulpit. And, and you know that order, and then all that stuff, the preaching, one hour, two hours, then a lunch break. People go come back for Bible study. They break for the group meetings. The elderly go to their group, men, Adventist men, women, Adventist women, then the youth and the ambassadors and all this stuff. We are, we are so mechanical in this until uh, the Sabbath have become a routine. The Sabbath is not a day of meeting the Lord and uh, having communion with him, but it's like just another weekly routine where you wake up, you do this and you do that and you do this. And even our days, sometimes our weekly days are different. We, we, we can decide to wake up on Monday and then just decide, no, I'm not going to the garden. I'm going to sleep a little bit and uh, just uh, wake up, bask the sun, go visit my friends and that. But uh, we are so strict with the mechanical way of operating in the Sabbath until we miss the blessings of the Lord. So let us come out of these mechanical services and have an experience with the Lord. Those who occupied a leading position in the church should not exhaust their physical and mental strength through the week so that on the Sabbath they are unable to bring the vivifying influence of the gospel of Christ into the meeting. Do less temporal everyday labor, but do not rob God by giving him on the Sabbath service which he cannot accept. You should not be as men who have no spiritual life. The people need your help on Sabbath. Give them food from the world. Bring your choices to give to God on his holy day. Let the precious life of the soul be given to him in consecrated service, 63, 61.3. And uh, I have been guilty of this, and I know many people are guilty of this. You do a lot of work during the week so that when the Sabbath comes and you are the preacher, it's just a half service that you are going to offer to the people. And uh, I'm praying the Lord that I may be converted on this uh, aside, uh, that um, at least I may work and also be fresh on the Sabbath so that if I'm approached that you are presenting, or if I have been given that mandate prior, then I can have life in myself, which can be given to others. That is, Christ can find me fresh and I give the freshness to other people. You know, the priest on the Sabbath gave fresh bread. They didn't come with stale bread. They didn't come with the bread that was there all throughout the week. They gave something fresh. But we come to the Sabbath and we are ministers, and I included, and we are so tired that uh, we pick a verse that we know so well, and because we are tired, we give what we know rather than relying on God to speak to us afresh. But God cannot speak fresh unto us with a mind which is so tired and cannot comprehend spiritual things. And so we ask forgiveness in this, and I'm praying that um, my fellow ministers will think about this so that uh, they may not be coming to the church so tired and then they have nothing to offer on the Sabbath. They don't have the fresh bread from heaven to give to the, to the people. And so that is another section that we need to, uh, uh, to, to come to the Sabbath. And you find that uh, it continues to say that many will come to the Sabbath and because they are so tired, they, 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 they make uh, the house of God to be a, a sleeping place. And uh, sometimes we do this... Uh, silly jokes that uh, people do not have peace in their home so let them sleep in the church because that is the only place there they, they find peace no brethren sometimes those jokes are not best and uh, may god forgive us on behalf of other ministers may the lord forgive us and i know everyone will do their own repentance that um, the, the church is not a place for sleeping the reason why people come to sleep there many times is because they are just tired they have done all their work on the on the during the week until Friday late, and then they come to the Sabbath school so tired, and then you are you you are you are just speaking heavenly things, but people are tired and they can't comprehend anything. And so, um, 
uh, I like also to read something from Council to Sabah School Work, page 183, paragraph 2. Um, I, I just be going through these notes that I made, and uh, I know that uh, we shall be blessed together. Companies of Sabbath keepers may be raised up in many places. Often, they will not be large companies, but they must not be neglected. They must not be left to die for want of proper personal effort and training. The work should not be left prematurely. See that all are intelligent in the truth, established in the faith, and interested in every branch of work before leaving them for another field. Now, um, think about this. There, there are Sabbath schools which have uh, five people, six people, and seven people. You know, I have seen ministers, they love a large congregation. That is what animates them. That is what stimulates them. They, they cannot give what they think it is need induces on those hard staffs or um, those things which are needful, by the way. They are not hard staff. And they wait until the congregation, they're having maybe 100 people, 200 people. That is when the people show how intelligent they are with their Bibles, with their PowerPoints and all that. No, we are told even if there are three, even if there are five, if, even if there are six, give them the full bread of Jesus Christ. Meet in due season that which is helpful for them. Let them know the prophecies. Let them know medical missionary work. Let them know what they ought to know. Don't neglect, don't, don't be a preacher who is stimulated by the crowd. Don't be a preacher who is induced by the numbers. That is, Christ himself was a one-man preacher. He did not wait for people to gather millions or thousands so that he may uh, preach to them and give them that, that which was needful. Uh, those prophecies of Daniel and Revelation and uh, those um. Uh, 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 great words in the books, uh, the Pentateuch. No, Christ was able to preach to few people the necessary truth for those people. And so let not ministers neglect little congregations which are gathered in different places. Offer yourself to go and be able to raise up the Sabbath school, give them meeting due season, so that also they may be benefited with what large churches also benefit in. And um, as uh, we just uh, bring this to some close, uh, I'll, be, uh, I'll be just going through this and giving it uh, all I can for a few minutes. It has been proved in the missional field that whatever, whatever may be the preaching talent, if the laboring part is neglected, if the people are not taught how to work, how to conduct meetings, how to act their part in missional labor, how to reach people successful, the work will be nearly a failure. There is much to be done in the Sabbath school work, also in bringing the people to realize their obligation and to act their part. God calls them to work for him and the minister should guide, guide their efforts. Um, also, God has given men six days where into labor and requires that their own work be done in the six working days. Acts of necessity and mercy are permitted on the Sabbath. The sick and suffering are at all times to be cared for, but unnecessary labor is to be strictly avoided. Now, I, I'll read this um, quote on little companies and then uh, uh, come back um, to this. Uh, Companies of Sabbath keepers may be raised up in many places. Often they will not be like companies, but they must not be neglected. And so um, we ought to, when uh, we go to this Sabbath school, to train them to be laborers. And that is why we are told, let the preaching be short, but let the work of instructing, let the work of teaching, let questions be raised. Questions which are not controversial. We should avoid debates and controversies on the Sabbath, but questions on how we can labor well for Christ, even during the week. The, 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 the preacher and the teacher has a task to reach out to these members, to raise their spiritual level, to raise a missionary spirit in them, so that at the end of the Sabbath, when it is closing, people are... Um, 
having this zeal to go out and reach to the people, not to go and sit and wait to be preached on on the other Sabbath. And so there is the work that the preacher has to do, just like the work that Christ did to train up the 12. Also, the preachers in this time, we don't have to be much of the preachers, but the teachers of the word, knowing that time. The time that we are living in, we have to teach people to be dependent and not in, uh, to be independent and not dependent so that they can be able to stand for themselves. They can be able to go out and do the work. The work of preaching and bringing souls to Christ is not left to the elders. It is not left to the pastors. It is not left to the presidents of the conferences. But everyone must act his part in making sure that they bring souls to Christ because there will be no crown for a people who have not labored for the souls of others. And so the preacher has a task to be able to train up those coming into the Sabbath school to be able to be workers for Christ. If they can hold Bible readings, if they can interest people in uh, leaflets, then that is a, a noble work that they should be trained in. And so um, when it comes to that, we have to review how we have been uh, conducting our Sabbath school and how we have been training those who are coming into the Sabbath school. Lastly, we are told that we have six days to labor and uh, works of mercy can be done on Sabbath, but let it not be the main issue that the work we could have carried on, like visiting prisons, visiting the needy, visiting the sick. Now it is the whole work that, that encompasses us on the Sabbath. Yes, we can relieve these people, but that sh should not be the absorbing work of the Sabbath. And so let me now finish um, uh, reading that quote that I was reading on that. In uh, councils to councils to Sabbath school work. That is um, page uh, page. Um, no, this is Patrick's and Prophets. Page 307, paragraph three. God has given men six days where into labor and it requires that their work be done in six working days. Acts of necessity and mercy are permitted on Sabbath. The sick and suffering are at all times to be cared for, but unnecessary labor is to be strictly avoided. Turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a day like the holy of the Lord. Honorable and honor him, not doing thy own ways, nor finding thy own pleasure. Isaiah 58, 13. Nor does the prohibition end here, nor speaking thy own words, says the prophet. Those who discuss business matters or lay plans on the Sabbath are regarded by God as though engaged in the actual transaction of business. To keep the Sabbath holy, we should not even allow our minds to dwell upon things of a worldly character. And the commandment includes all within our gates. The inmates of the house are to lay aside their worldly business during the sacred hours. All should unite to honor God by willing service upon his holiday. And then lastly, as we were talking about uh, training others, it has been pro proved in the mission of faith that was, whatever may be the preaching talent, if the laboring part is neglected, if the people are not taught how to work, how to conduct meetings, how to act their part in mission or labor, how to reach people successfully, the work will be nearly a failure. There is much to be done in the Sabbath school work, also in bringing the people to realize their obligation and to act their part. God calls them to work for him and the minister should guide their efforts. And so um, there are various things we have covered. We have um, seen that uh, the Lord tells us to be able to bring his, our burdens unto him so that he may heal us spiritually and physically. Also, we have seen that our deportment, our grace should reflect the Lord that uh, we really worship, that uh, the glory should emanate from inside so that we may not be ships, uh, wolves in sheep's clothing, dressed so well while the inside is so rotten. We have also found out that uh, uh, small companies should not be neglected. And... Um, um, medical missionary work can be done on Sabbath school and uh, on Sabbath days, and then uh, 
let us make this day a day of days to our young children by helping them interact with the nature, teaching them the trees that has medicinal uh, 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 virtues in them. And um, uh, preaching should be short. And then uh, a, a work of training uh, those uh, that come into the Sabbath school should not be neglected. And so my prayer is this, that um, the Lord is going to continue speaking unto our hearts. The Lord will continue interesting us in uh, doing the right things on the uh, Sabbath. And uh, uh, lastly, that uh, um, we, we will not really teach people to be dependent, but we will teach people to be independent so that uh, if the work has to be carried on without a minister that day, then uh, 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 there can be something who can conduct the Sabbath school. Also, we have, be, we, we have seen that uh, the priests offered fresh bread on Sabbath. And so we should not come to the Sabbath school as ministers so tired that uh, we don't have a vivifying influence upon the congregation. Let us come there fresh so that we can comprehend spiritual things and in turn we can give unto others. And uh, lastly, we have seen that uh, Sabbath preparation should start on Sunday. And so that when we reach on Friday, the things that should be done have been done and uh, we can spend a time earlier with the Lord. Uh, we next shall be seeing the reformation that Nehemiah was able to carry out in his day and uh, also how we have lost the sanctity of the Sabbath and how the Lord is calling us uh, to restore it. Otherwise, may we think about these things and uh, may the Lord of the Sabbath Bless us as we continue looking into this series of uh, a need for Sabbath reform. Shall we close with a word of prayer? Thank you, Jesus, for the things that you want us to learn. And thank you for your grace that you give unto us. We pray that, Lord, these things, we may not only present them, but we may practice them so that they may have a telling influence upon those who are waiting to see the manifestation of Jesus Christ in our lives. And so thank you for hearing us and thank you for hearkening unto us and answering our prayers always. Make us doers of the word and not only hear us deceiving ourselves. You are grace be with us and be with your people and may thy will be accomplished in our life. This we pray in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you until the next late night presentation. In Jesus' name.